Kids with a 5.3 and 1340 for hip-hop and R&B live the day party with your favorite DJ, DJ D. Sewell. Y'all, it is Women's History Month, and uh, we got somebody special here. We're doing our first interview of the month, but I'm a little bit behind, but we're going to make up for it with this big interview today. We got DJ Afrosia in the building. Hey, thank you for having me. You right on time, man. You right on time. <laughs> uh, I'm a little late, so I'm going to do some interviews to catch up, but like I said, we started off with a bang with you here today. Hey, so. well, thank you for having you gotta me. Help us out, man. We really appreciate you being here. So uh, let's just start from the beginning. How did you get into DJing? Man, DJing is something I wanted to do since I was in like elementary school. No just way. like like little kid, just, just being too obsessed with music. But I think my real push to like get into DJing was just moving up here. Moving okay. up here, going to school for broadcasting, getting in the broadcast program and realizing it's 90% TV, 10% radio, and then just getting involved with the college radio station here, yeah. KXUA 88.3. Just had to give my plug real quick. That's where I was born and raised on those airwaves. Like nothing compared to the freedom of being on college radio. So I think yeah. it just kind of pushed me to really take my passion seriously. That is so crazy, like very, very similar story. And that's how I went to the U of A broadcasting, KHUA on the same. Yeah, you grew up in the same, same airwaves. Okay, that is, that is wild. Yeah, that is. <laughs> but I, I, like, I fell in love with, with radio doing the KHUA, but like you say, the freedom and just going there and the responsibility and putting the show together. It's super cool. Right, it's really lax. You know, yeah. being in that broadcast program, it's like really serious. You gotta get your, get your story in on time, get your package done. Yeah. And then on my, my Saturday slot, I would just walk in and be like, I'm good for two hours. <laughs> like, I am on the air, but it's not that bad. This yeah. is life. Like, yeah. I can do this. Super cool, super cool. So how did you first start DJing? Like, actually being in front of people DJing? Like, All right, being in front of people DJing, so, when I was in college, I would help throw some parties around here. Oh. Okay, I was a part of a little collective <laughs> called We Fresh, and we would like throw little pop ups around here. I remember that uh, Smoking Girl. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, all right. And so a lot of the local DJs that would do those parties, such as like DJ EO, Eric Olson, people like, uh, let's see, Rob Flatch, just random DJs from around the area mm -hmm. would help, you know, throw these little parties, and I would watch them and just be like, okay. You know, I felt like I was kind of like a hype woman in some way. I was, I'm like, I did not be Jane, but like, I definitely feel the vibes, you know? So seeing that, getting into it, you know, I had somebody give me a DJ controller one day just to play with one day. No way. It took me like months to like finally get a transition that I felt was right, yeah. you know? You know, you start playing with the software and stuff, you're like, how is this working? I'm like, hold on, it looks, I feel like it should be easier than yeah. this. Because I'm a little overwhelmed with it first. Yeah. It was so overwhelming. But once I put like my, my knowledge of just curating from like KHUA, just like you, once you got the music selection, you're fine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then <laughs> it translated and I was like, all right, we're good, we're good. <laughs> and so from there, I just, I remember getting thrown a couple gigs here and there. My first gig actually was at Starlight Stadium. Really? Yeah, the stadium, yeah, yeah. At the skating ring. That was my first gig ever. So we're kind of celebrating my uh, five or six year DJ anniversary here. Super so, cool, super cool. Started fun. off just college radio, got a couple, got a couple people saying you should do this live. I was like, all right, let's go. That is so crazy. <laughs> so to anybody listening like this that want to get into DJing, how do you get started? How do you get a gig? How, how, how did that happen? And even once, once you got a gig, how did you continue? How did you keep the momentum going? I think it came from just getting your foot in the door in some way musically, whether it's like stop by your local radio station, chat with somebody, you know, yeah. express your interest in music in general. But I feel like getting the gig is just like, don't be afraid to be yourself. You don't have to go, you don't have to put yourself in the box of a traditional DJ. Yeah. There are so many DJs around here that play some of the most wild, obscure things. And I hope they know that they are gems and they yes. should still keep it. Okay? Yeah. So uh, to anybody wanting to get into the DJ space, just keep pursuing music. Become a historian of the music, yeah. okay? Like somebody, people need selectives as they're called. Just curators, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's where it starts. And something cool that you're saying, just being unique and being yourself. I even look at like the, the, the hip hop world. That's something that I always give people advice on. Because like, people have an idea of what you think rap is, but rap is so big. If you're just unique, you can find that audience. And no different than DJing. You think, oh, well, I got to play the hits and got to do this. No, you create your own world and that, that crowd will come to you. That is exactly like my motto is like being yourself, being genuine. That is what attracts people. Yes. People like sincerity. Okay, yes. so if you're silly, if you're weird, like, <laughs> let people know that because nice. other people are silly and weird. 
just like that. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I feel like, like I love that, that that's that's in the hip hop world here. Right? People yeah. need they need to know that more often. Yes, yes. Uh, so the uh, let's talk about some of the lows of DJing. What's some of the low parts of it? What's some of the bad parts of DJing that you had to overcome? Ooh. Okay, probably one of the hardest things is uh sometimes people will hire me simply because I am a woman DJ mm. and I am African American. Yeah. And I kind of try to tell people, like, you know, yeah, that that that's definitely a part of it, but that's <laughs> not true. white, you know? You. Some people kind of look at you that way. Mm -hmm. Some people think the only reason I'm getting gigs is because I'm a woman and because I'm African-American. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of the downside is just being, um, being kind of like, you know, a woman in the field that's mostly dominated by men. Honestly, I don't have any issues around here with that. I really don't. But I see where it's it's different. Not every male DJ is the same. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's it's just a different vibe being a woman in it, especially if you're by yourself or feel like you're by yourself. So I just encourage women in music, like just push through it. It may be awkward at first, it may be weird <laughs> not to be surrounded by someone like you or that looks yeah. like you, but there's some nice guys out here that I think will be cool and show you the ropes and just be kind, you That's know? Cool. Like everybody let's be kind. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Let's go to the opposite end, the high. Give me one, one of the, the highs that you think about just off the top of your head. Go ahead and DJ. The experiences. Every gig is different. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, you can do an 80s party one night. You can do <laughs> 90s. You can do some random, like, I, being in this area of, like, you know, the college students, you get a lot of the random themed yes. parties and stuff yes. like that. I just like how every gig is different. It's like I prepare a new set that is just, like, <laughs> like, yeah, like yeah. every day is different. You know what I'm saying? I think a lot of the time in the nine to five life, or just every day, we get stuck in just doing the same thing yes. every day. Yeah. I can say as a DJ, not, every gig is different. No matter if I do the same gig two or three times a month in the same space, every night will be different. Different people, different, different flow, thing, People from all over, especially <laughs> here. So it's really refreshing. That's super cool. Uh, well, tell us about. Uh, the biggest gig that you've done, the biggest one with the most amount of people, and just a, a random question we just talking about that. Do you get nervous? Do you still get nervous? Do you yes, I still do. It's not as bad, and I think it's because I do weddings. Okay. Because with the, the stress of a wedding, man, I thought that was the biggest, most woo, intense gig ever, you know, because it's someone's big day. It's going to be in their memory. That's how I feel. Or life. Weddings stress me out. They always stress me out. That's why I take a whole day and the next day to kind of recruit. Yeah. But um, my biggest gig, this is crazy. I don't think I can even think of it. I think some of my larger gigs would have to be um, doing like the women's conference, <laughs> like in Ben Bill Rogers That's area. Cool. That was pretty big. Um, probably one of the largest ones I can think of that I had no clue. They didn't even tell me then that it was going to be to this scale. <laughs> it was just, I thought it was just a, you know, like an opener type of fashion party at Crystal Bridges. <laughs> I get there and they're like, oh yeah, Tommy, he'll figure here. I'm like, oh, why? <laughs> and then like, I get done DJing and I go to the main party and I just feel like I ain't never been anywhere in my life. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay. And I'm sitting there and they're like, oh yeah, Seth Myers is behind you. They just gave away tickets to this show. I was like, <laughs> get me out of here, dog. I'm like, why did nobody tell me? Too much going on. It was just too much. And it was a simple night. Like, you know, I just played music kind of in the lobby area. Mm -hmm. They go into like, you know, the main show. Very simple, low key at the time of my life. Okay? That's crazy. It was just so <laughs> random. It felt like a fever dream. Be real with you. That's super cool. But, so, uh, any influences in, in the DJ world? Did you sing it up? Yes. Kind of inspire you? Yes. Honestly, when I first moved here, some of my uh, big influences, of course, was like DJ Derek yeah. and DJ Ty Walker. Because I remember just being at the union. Or going to some type of event and seeing them being like, this dude is really DJing right now. Like, I felt like I had never seen a DJ really spin before. Okay. So like I would, you know. Yeah. But as far as like big DJ influences, one of my largest like, she makes Jersey Club music. She's from uh, the the Jersey area. She goes by Unique. Yeah. I love. Each. She's my girl. Like, okay. She really got me into it because I've seen her really like like elevate over the right. past couple of years and I remember when she would just be giving us tips on how to make music <laughs> or like how to make a set real quick yeah. you know and then seeing her kind of take over that genre in the U.S. has been like remarkable. And it's wild that Jersey Club is so big now. 
Wow. I've been listening to Jersey Club since I was in high school. <laughs> it's like in the Vine type era, yeah. the, the pre TikTok. Those remixes were still as important as they are today. That's so crazy. Like, isn't it weird yes. how we're coming back? Like, I know we're doing a little Lil Bird dances and stuff now, but like when I was it's a teenager, we were doing it too. Yeah, to say the fist pump. Yeah, we were pumping, doing the soldier boy. We had our thing. Yeah, all day, all day, all day. <laughs> straight up. So, uh, Afro, what? How are you seeing yourself in the future? What do you got planned for this year? Uh, just personal goals in, in your DJ career. Personal goals that I have in my DJ career is just, it's always been travel. Yeah, okay, like, yeah. I've been putting it behind and behind, just like, okay, well, like, you're comfortable here, like, but no, like, my goal has always just been to travel the world, just being yeah, able to do things that I enjoy and have fun. And so, I'm wanting to kind of just spread vibes, like, in, in more areas, yeah, different yeah, places, yeah. different spaces. Like, I feel like that's my goal for the year. It's just trying to break free a little bit, give some give some energy and some vibes to some other areas, yes. maybe branch out to some other areas in the south. Um, get my passport. I just just go get it. That's on my bucket list for the book. <laughs> just go get it. Go get it. So if you get an opportunity one day out of the country, you'll be like, I have arrived. You know, like just put myself get get myself ready. You know, because yeah. I, I feel like I feel like I'm close. You know. You are, you are. And, and just talking about that, one thing that you got going is your energy and especially just your skill wise. Like you're, you're something unique and you add to something. So if somebody see you DJ, they remember it. It ain't just like somebody just playing music. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. They yeah. see you having fun and you're doing it in a different way. So it's coming. You know hey, what I'm saying? People thank notice you, that. Thank you. Thank you. It's the only way to do it. Yeah. Like seriously, every gig. I'm just having fun. I can always thank tell. you, thank you for paying me to have fun. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Doesn't it feel like that every day though? Even yourself. It really does. <laughs> it does. Some days you get tired, but then you just think about like I really get to do this. I'm like, this is a reward. I don't even see. Let me wipe down my eyes. I'm tired. <laughs> so crazy. DJ, I probably will appreciate you. Uh, one last thing, how'd you go come up with your night? DJ Man, y'all, okay. So right now, I started my love journey this past week. So okay, yeah, Afrosia, okay. Afrosia is still here. <laughs> All right, she's after a century, okay? But I got DJ Afrosia in high school. In okay. high school, I was probably, I feel like the first girl in Southside High School for her, by the way. Southside High School? Yeah, to like ever go natural. Like, I'll never forget. Okay. It was during the... the all the girls are starting to go natural. And I did the big chop, and that's huge. I guess you know yeah. what I mean. It's huge to just make a step, a leap like that. Yeah, yeah. Now did I get roasted a lot? But there was one guy in class. I'll never forget his name. Wesley Carson. I'm calling you out. He literally would mess up my name intentionally. He'd be like, "All right, Afrosia, Afrosia. You said Afrosia one day, and I said I took that to heart. Okay. I said, I All right, DJ Afrosia. So then when I started to come up with names, I was like, okay, the name is Afrosia. How can we kind of mix it in there? Hey, shout out to Wesley. I, I did it. It took a roast and made two power behind it. Yes, so I was like, made something out of it. You want to believe it? <laughs> I like it. I love it. I love it. Uh, DJ Afrodi, we appreciate you being here. The first interview for Women's History Month. Great interview. I knew we hit it off with a bang. You did a great job. Like yeah. I already knew, so. Thank you so much for having me, y'all. Yeah, and uh, you got some big news with Kiss 105.3 we can share, right? Well, we just had the first show. Let everybody know about it, right? All right, y'all. Every Friday from 9 to 10 p.m., I'm going to give you guys a solid hour of some good tunes, good vibes. Yeah. I, hey, I don't know if it's gonna be themed this week or not, but I'm feeling some thousands R&B. Okay, okay, now. okay. Just it's just gonna be an hour to just vibe and chill out. So just chill out with me every Friday, y'all. And I gotta give you your props too. So I'm, I'm getting lined up, get my beard done. Now balls, I'm oh, gonna get a haircut, get my beard done. I see DJ dribbles. She says I don't really listen to Kiss 105.3 a lot, but I'm gonna listen on Friday night. Hey. Y'all better <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, we appreciate what you're doing already. Hey, <laughs> you know what I'm well, hey man, listen to more radio, though. Straight up. Straight up. <laughs> we appreciate you. Y'all DJ Afroja. Y'all make sure to check her out. Anywhere you DJ in that, we can tell people to catch you live. All right. Well, this week, the, the Friday gig is sold out, unfortunately. But Thursday night, I will be right here on Dixon at 10 Roof, all right? 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. Come hang out with the show. Big time. I can only get out on Friday, so I can see you on Friday. I see how it is. I see how it is. Hey, I'm telling <laughs> okay, you. Okay, big time. I'm promoting that. I'm so proud. I'm smiling. Okay, big time. I see how it is. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, DJ Afrosia, y'all make sure to check her out. Y'all, this is Kiss 105.3, 13 points.